Alright, so this is my review for Inuyasha the Final Act, which is the conclusion of a much beloved anime series. Uh, depends whether or not you loved it or not. Um, I really don't have a lot to say about this. When it comes down to Inuyasha, it was something that I liked a lot when I first got exposed to it. And then kind of after I figured out the series, the way that it worked, I kept up with it, you know, just because it was about the best thing that I could find as far as anime went. At least uh, until I was exposed to Roroni Kenshin. Uh, and it's a good series. It had a lot of potential to it, but it kind of fell into the trap of uh, a lot of wash, rinse, and repeat for a lot of situations in the series. Uh, characters are pretty much the same as they started with throughout when they were introduced into the series, and they kind of kept up with their problems. Uh, Inuyasha is wanting to get revenge on Naraku for Kikyo. Moroku is still bitching about his wind tunnel. Sango is bitching about a brother. Uh, and just as the series unfolded, it, it got really good at some points. Uh, case in point, the Band of Seven uh, story arc from the fifth season, which I really liked. And, uh, I don't know, it, it really got bogged down by the fact that the entire course of this anime was, uh, a bunch of protagonists chasing down one guy. And every time that somebody would learn a new way to defeat him, Naraku would, uh, gain a technique to stop it, and then it just became seven seasons worth of anything you can do, I can do better. And that really got on my nerves a lot with the series, and especially pissed me off with the way that the original series concluded. Um, I think Takahashi wrote 500 chapters of Inuyasha. I stopped reading after... I stopped reading after the part where Sashomaru and uh, his group met uh, Sashomaru's mother. So a lot of the series of the manga that went to the conclusion I have no idea entirely what happened. Uh, what they decided to do with this, instead of just making four or five more seasons to drag that out, they condense it down into 26 episodes, and it's just a barrel rush to uh, hurry up and get to the conclusion and finish the series entirely. In the long run... Again, I don't really have much to say about this because of the fact that the tone of the show feels like everything that happened before in the first seven seasons, and this basically is just doing the same thing, although we do have a little more sense of urgency to hurry up and get to the conclusion of the series. Uh, there are some things that did uh, catch me off guard with the series, and I was kind of led to an idea that they might go and decide to kill one of the uh, main protagonists off, uh, who was not Kikyo. Uh, because there's an instance in this anime where one of the characters is actually inflicted a wound bad enough that it could kill them. And it's actually a course with a way that, uh, they start killing off a lot of characters, particularly Naraku's minions. And I thought that, hey, this protagonist character might actually die. Uh, and that kind of drags out for about two episodes, and then they fix it. And then just eventually later on, uh, the person gets better, and I was kind of let down by that. I, I actually would have appreciated if this went a more ballsy route and just kind of didn't wind up with a fairy tale ending and actually did something to kind of twist uh, the formula for us, but it uh, didn't happen. Um, a lot of characters who kind of faded off into the background of uh, the, uh, the first Inuyasha series are kind of brought back to the forefront in this, particularly Koga, who is... They make a big deal about him and some new uh, weapon that he gains uh, while Naraku is after his jewel shards. Uh, it doesn't really impress me that much. Uh, basically, all this is is just... Um, as I said, there's there's not really much to say about this. It's just kind of a repetition of everything that came before, but it just has a little more sense of urgency to go ahead and get to the conclusion of it. As for the conclusion itself, I thought that it was as good as it was going to be for an Inuyasha series. 
Um, the the only thing that really surprised me is uh, actually when Inuyasha and Kagome are uh, sucked inside the jewel with Naraku, and the way that the final battle plays itself out was a little unusual to me, but given everything that's happened in Inuyasha thus far, it's just kind of logic that I have to accept and finally just go ahead and say we finally wrapped up the series. Um... And just everything for a lot of the characters throughout the series kind of falls into place in a typical fairy tale fashion. It builds up to a, you know, a happily ever after type ending, and that's pretty much what you get at the conclusion of this anime. Uh, Inuyasha and Kagome wind up together. Sango and Moroku wind up together. Uh, there are some other instances where they do. Uh, have some generally favorable endings for Sashomaru, who finally completes a very long, dragged-out character arc, which uh, is simply to please the fans who would bitch if Sashomaru uh, had not shown up in the series. Basically, all this is is just like Inuyasha Season 8, uh, and it just hurries up and gets to the end. Um... Inuyasha fans will enjoy this. Uh, hardcore Inuyasha fans will be ecstatic and kind of saddened a little bit that the series finally ended and didn't get to capture everything that they wanted. But for what this is, it's about as good as you're going to get. So uh, unless you're just a hardcore Inuyasha fan or just somebody that really wanted a better ending than what you got with uh, the original series, uh, this is going to be good enough to just kind of bring the long-awaited conclusion that this series actually deserved instead of just that half-assed one we got at the end of Season 7. So, uh, it's really up to you if you liked any Yasha or not. Pick this up, and uh, that's just really all I have to say about it.